In part 1 we had a glance at the user interface and very extensive metadata. In this show we look at Rune as a system for in-house music distribution. Each and every digital music player contains a number of functions that together form a player. Storage, control, user interface and digital to analog conversion, all connected through their respective interfaces. In a CD player, the storage is a CD in a CD drive connected via an internal connection to the DA conversion. The system control is hidden for the user and the user interface is on the front of the player and on the re infrared remote control. With file based audio players like Rune, there also needs to be a library function to replace the user getting the CD from the storage and inserting it into the drive. The library system and the control section form the heart of each system. Rune calls this the core and that needs to be installed on a computer that either runs Windows 7 or later or Mac OS X 10.8 or later. Windows 8.1 or OS X 10.10 are currently recommended. There also is a list of recommended minimum hardware. Intel Core i5, Ivy Bridge 4GB of RAM, SSD boot drive and 4040 x 900 screen resolution. Rune notes that Due to ongoing developments, the system requirements will increase over time. For both OS's there are two versions of the core, one that has a user interface integrated and one without a user interface. The latter is meant to be used on a so-called headless server, a computer that has no monitor attached. Regardless whether you use the headless version or the full version, you can install the user interface on any compatible computer in your network by installing the full version and indicate that there is already a core server installed that you want to use. You can also use a tablet as a full user interface. Both Android and iOS tablets are supported but not smartphones and you do need a recent model tablet. Check the RuneLab site for details. To be completely clear, you can run the core or headless core on a Windows computer and start up a user interface on a Mac or vice versa. You can also have more user interfaces running at the same time on computers and tablets. Now we've covered the core and the user interface, let's look at the storage. In short, any storage that can be accessed by the computer core runs on will work. So an internal drive, an external drive, a network share on another computer or a share on a NAS, they all will do provided their speed is sufficient. I'm under the impression that Rune uses clever techniques to prevent mutes due to network congestion since Rune works fine all the time as where for instance for Lumio on a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 2B sometimes give trouble when heavy video backup started automatically. There are two ways Rune can handle your music volumes. Just index them and link metadata to or do that and reorganize the directories like iTunes does. Rune can use a multitude of drives and shares and you can decide on either mode for each drive and share. Although not completely clear, I think that most of Rune metadata remain in its own local database and is stored on the startup drive. Therefore Rune advises to use a solid state system drive since it's a lot faster than conventional drives, essential for these kinds of database operations. For the audio data there is far less of a rush, therefore a conventional hard disk or network share will work fine. remains the DA conversion. Next to the metadata marvel, this is potentially a very strong point of Rune. On any computer Rune is running, 
either headless, full or user interface only, it will recognize and is able to use all audio outputs that are also seen by the local OS. Roon calls them endpoints. The user chooses what output is used by Roon and can set preferences like sampling rate conversion, DSD over DOP or conversion to PCM, use exclusive and integer mode and so on. On my Mac Mini it sees the core DAC via USB, the system output, the analog output and the HDMI output. At the same time it sees the AudioQuest Dragonfly via USB, the HP monitor via HDMI and the system output on my MacBook Pro, while it also sees the system output of the iMac in the video studio. It would have seen the outputs of any Windows computer too had I installed Rune on it. Rune doesn't currently work with the audio outputs of tablets, but that's on the development. You can play individual music to any of these endpoints while controlled from just one computer or tablet, for as far as the network and the core can handle the data. I had seven endpoints playing, each with its, with its own music, without any problem. But there's more. All AirPlay version 2 stations can be used as endpoints as well. In my current setup, not only my AirPod Express and Apple TV are available, but also the Raspberry Pi running Mood and the Aurelic Ares Mini that also supports AirPlay. Of course, the AirPlay protocol is currently limited to a sampling rate of 48 kHz max. Furthermore, Rune supports the Squeezebox protocol and therefore also sees the Raspberry Pi running Pi Core player that emulates the Squeezebox player. Connected to a Chord Hugo, it plays anything that is recognized as music, regardless sampling rate, bit depth and thus DSD over PCM2. But Rune Labs is further expanding playout options using solutions they call Rune speakers. It's an API, a kind of software interconnect, that will allow manufacturers to make their hardware playout stations for Rune. The first brand announced was Aurelic with their Ares player, not a Mini. Many others are also mentioned amongst the many premium brands. See the Rune Lab site for more information. Last but certainly not least, Rune will also work with all modern Meridian hardware as endpoints. I didn't test multi-room since that would require identical endpoints. I understand Rune Labs is working on making multi-room independent of the endpoints. I have the headless version installed on an Apple Mac Mini from mid-2011 with 8 gigs of RAM and an SSD system drive. It also runs iTV that records TV programs. It is coupled to a plasma TV but since characters are very small on a TV when at viewing distance, there was no point in installing the UI version. I normally use the iPad Air 2 for normal use. I like that a lot better than having a big screen in my living. Maintenance can also be done on the iPad but I prefer to use my MacBook Pro laptop connected to a 25 inch monitor and a full size keyboard and mouse. I have tested several configurations. The Cord QDB76 HDSD connected over USB directly to the Mac Mini, the Aurelic Ares Mini and Raspberry Pi with Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus running Mood software connected via AirPlay, the Raspberry with Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus with Output Transformer running Pi Core Player as Squeezebox Player and the AudioQuest Dragonfly DAC on my MacBook Pro directly. It all works very stable. If there is a problem with the software then it's the enormous amount of functions. At a given moment you can run out of logical clicks, menus and other UI tricks. This makes the learning curve steep or at least steeper than that of other player software. Room is a bit perfect player that will only convert the sample rate when you try to play back a file that is not suited for the DA converter you are connected to. Or if you explicitly ask Rune 
to upsample or use the volume control. In all other cases, any bit in a music file, including MQA files, will be sent to the DA converter unaltered. This makes Rune MQA compatible and the same goes for the Squeezebox and all other BitPerfect software and hardware players. Have Rune send a MQA file to an MQA decoder DA converter and it will work fine. On the Rune Labs forum, requests are made to integrate MQA in Rune. I'm not sure that is going to happen, but it could be done. But it will limit the effect of MQA since the compensation for time smearing in the DA converter will not take place since the MQA software that must be integrated in Rune would not know the behavior of the DA converter. You do get a 24 bit 192 kHz file from the MQA file, but to have the full benefit of MQA you do need an MQA DA converter. Some people on forums claim that other quality software sounds better and who am I to question that? But it doesn't keep me from doing some research. On my system Rune sounds equal to Audivana 2 Plus, J River Media Center 21 and Pure Music when set to bit perfect transparency. Differences start to occur when sampling rate conversion is used. I don't like sampling rate conversion done by software but that might have to do with the filtering of my core DAX. Things changed when I connected an old benchmark DAC1, the first iteration. Here upsampling in the computer sounded better, but what so software sounded better is hard to conclude since there are so many variables and I found no setting that equals my chords. Timbre can be influenced, as can the stereo imaging. Even the transient response can be changed. So when you need upsampling to compensate for things you don't like in your DAC, other software might give more pleasing results. But if you just want to send the bits unharmed to the DAC, Rune is just as good as Orivana 2 Plus, J River Media Center 21 and Pure Music. In the third and for this time last episode of Rune Review, I will look at third party hardware. It will probably take some time before this hardware becomes available, so subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account to keep up to date. You can also post questions there. You find the information below this video on YouTube and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.